So anytime I go diving, I basically have to get out to the dive store the day before and pick up tanks. Fortunately, our local dive store has a tank subscription where we pay a set fee and then we get two tanks per week for the entire year. Great deal. Uh, I exceed the two tanks a week all the time, so I still have to get individual tank fills, but still saves us a massive amount of money. That's how we do this affordably on a regular basis. It is depressingly early and we are lurking in the dark. What? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Watch me as I narrate a video and run off the road and oh run gosh. over somebody's tent. Anyway, each morning, early, I drive her to her <laughs> car. Chauffeur service. I don't even charge her. She never tips me. <laughs> and Blondie packs up, gets a few last glares at me for completely unreason oh wow oh did you see that see I, i'm back for a couple of days and honeymoon period's over apparently <laughs> don't stop that <laughs> don't stop matt <laughs> so this campground is actually a little better i don't have to get on the freeway to get down to laguna beach it's still about a 30 35 minute drive this time of morning to get down to where we're diving. And you got the coffee in the bathroom stop, of course. So part of the reason why we go diving so early in the morning is because of traffic. Parking in Laguna is notoriously bad. So early morning, late at night, those tend to be the only viable times. Uh, also, we have to hit the tide tables, but today that's going to be a little uh, less than ideal. So the good news is that dive conditions have apparently improved quite a bit. I talked to some folks who were out this weekend and they said they were getting 20 foot visibility. So that's exciting. This might actually be worthwhile. Not that, you know, I wouldn't be out here if we had five foot visibility because any day underwater. So this is Laguna Canyon Road and it's kind of one of the fewer few accesses over the coastal range. Uh, which includes Crystal Cove State Park, where we were camped the other night. Uh, as a result, it tends to get a whole heck of a lot of traffic and will just back up massively in another hour or two. So in addition to just being kind of an artsy beach town, uh, Laguna Beach is known for Pageant of the Masters and uh, the Sawdust Festival. Jen and I have toyed with trying to get a apartment rental down here sometime. But honestly, it's just way too crowded, especially during, you know, prime time hours. Since we're in a van with no refrigeration, we have to basically use trail rules for food. So <laughs> lots of supermarkets, sandwiches, bars, et cetera, et cetera. Winter Wonderland, uh, the park. And this would be why I don't like going this late. Already a bit busy here at Shaw's Cove. So where that minivan is with the door open, that's where we usually like to try and park. So this is Shaw's Cove. Basically, all the dive is off to our right in front of those palm trees. There is an underwater canyon that's kind of famous here, and then going around the corner, you can actually meet the south side of Crescent Bay. So as you can see, the waves are pretty much as good as we could ask for. And like I said, hopefully there's better visibility than what we've been having. So when we get really, really tiny waves, we call it Lake Laguna conditions. This isn't quite that, but this should be pretty easy. And of course, if you remember that oil rig that spilled a few weeks ago, uh, that was right near here. That was actually one of the oil rigs I've gone diving with Jen before. So the surf forecast said two to three foot waves. Well, there's a two to three foot wave. <laughs> and then only a 1.5 foot surge. So, uh, and not much force behind the waves. So hoping this is gonna be a much better day kind of figures that conditions get better just as I'm going out of town. Jen and I leave tomorrow for our Thanksgiving trip, so it gets really, really nice and we're going to be gone. So generally you want to go in either at high tide or low tide because there's going to be less water moving around. Uh, we are going a little early for high tide, but again, we didn't want to come too late and have the beach be super busy. Also, I mean, come on, I just like being out here at sunrise. So basically for here, our plan is we go out to where you see the rocks start. We drop down, go along the reef, see if the channel 
is doable. Basically, that means there's not too much surge going on where it's going to smash us against rocks and things like that. If it is really marginal, then there is actually kind of a slot that we can do in the back of that to get over to the main reef on the far side. Otherwise, we come back out, go to about where that guy is, and go around the corner. That guy's got doubles on him, so he's obviously intending to go down for a while. So, lower surf, less surge, and also we've got sunlight today. So hopefully this is going to be much more scenic than uh, the other one. See, these stairs are at least a little more spread out, though. I think there's a few extra. There's actually a good number of dive sites out here. It's just some of them are very hard to access like the one called Thousand Steps, which doesn't quite have a thousand steps, but it has a few hundred and they are steep. Carrying tanks down, that is a bitch. And it is gearing up time. And this is my new camera setup. It's a GoPro Hero 10. Previously, I had a 4 that did not do near as well. And I also had a TG4, but that was actually, uh, it's an Olympus uh, point-and-shoot camera. That one was way too much of a pain. So if you're wondering why I have expensive gear while I'm an indigent hiker, it's because all this dates back to when I was actually working. So there's three of us diving here today. So the hard part is time yet. So we're not wearing our neoprene for 20 minutes and dying of like, you know, heat stroke.
that was the best dive since I've been back. We had like 20 foot visibility. Saw seals, saw all sorts of stuff. I think that was the second best day diving I've ever had at Shaw's. And now conditions are getting even better. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Jen and I are going to Zion in just a uh, little over a day. So I'm gonna miss out on the really nice diving for the rest of the week. And now the not so fun part, cleaning off the gear. At least we're in a campground with water today. So the biggest thing to wash is actually the wetsuit, because you know what happens when you drink a bunch of coffee and you need to pee into water? You pee in the wetsuit. Way more polite than being in somebody else's wetsuit, yeah. So they do actually make a wetsuit shampoo. I usually don't mess around with that. <laughs> I just rinse it out really good, try and get all of the uh, sand off of it, which is a trick with these uh, hands and feet holes. Basically, salt water is horrendous for pretty much everything, so you want to rinse it off, get all the salt off as much as humanly possible. Now, on an average week, I don't let my stuff dry out, so I don't have to worry about it quite as much, but still, you wanna take care of this stuff. It's kind of expensive. So then the trick is just trying to let everything dry without putting it in direct sunlight, because direct sunlight is really, really bad for neoprene, and these things are not cheap. Uh, somebody is actually gifting me a dry bag uh, so you can hang a wetsuit and it keeps the sun off of it but allows it to dry and I'm really looking forward to that. That should be coming in another week or two. So the trick is, you know, it's fine having stuff set out while I'm here, but if I go any place then I've got to throw everything back into the Jeep inside the bin and yeah. My wetsuit was still wet from Friday and you know, today is Monday.